Is anybody actually watching this? <laughs> because uh, the entire industry is boycotting YouTube. <laughs> Coming up, this is the episode that no one will ever see. Hello and welcome to ID.com's Media Snack, episode 70. Now given that the entire ad industry seems to be boycotting YouTube, uh, it's unlikely anyone's actually watching this, so we could just kind of goof around really. But uh, on this episode, we are going to dig into the fact that, uh, that Google uh, is under attack from all sides, I think, from the ad industry. That's right, and we're going to talk a little bit about the pitch market and how it seems to be hotting up. Yeah, all coming up on Media Snack in just the time it takes to eat a sandwich on your own. Okay, so let's just kick straight into this. Uh, if you've been on holiday for the last two weeks, you will have missed this, but everybody else has been observing kind of the only story really dominating uh, the, the global media industry, really. And beyond. Right? And beyond, yeah, because it's now on the front, it's now front page news. Um, is this whole idea that, that advertisers' money or ads are being placed against kind of unsavory content and the headlines uh, in the, certainly the British press have been um, advertisers funding terrorists and extremism. Mm. So that's the kind of the sensational headline. Yeah. What's really behind that um, is that you know on YouTube, we'll just use that as an example in this case, on YouTube there uh, is content which may be deemed you know, inappropriate from advertisers generally mm. um, and some you know, major advertisers have found that their ads have been appearing against some extremist content on YouTube. And their money. Right. And therefore their money is finding its way through to that. Now it turns out, I mean Google have, have looked into this and it turns out that it's, as in their words, pennies not pounds, so I don't know how much you know, terrorism it's really funding. Uh, but the, the principle is, I think is not the money, is it? It's the association. So if you're a marketer, that's right. You, you just don't you, want. Yeah, you're terrified that uh, your your brand message is appearing in in a context that is completely inappropriate to yeah. your requirements. Yeah, and that's the biggest concern. Yeah, uh, and so there's going to have been this this war of words. I mean, every single day people are taking you know swipes at everybody else and, and blaming each other. The the most of the fingers seem to be pointing at Google, given that you know as owners of YouTube, uh, they are accused of. Or, suggested that they are responsible for, the, for allowing this to happen. Um, but you know, advertising sitting next to you know, inappropriate content is nothing new. That's not a YouTube phenomena, right? The, the, if you're, if you're a, a bank, you don't want to be on the front page of a newspaper when they're talking right. about banking that's crisis. Right. Yeah, and that's right. you, know, you don't want to be a car manufacturer under a story about a car crash yeah. and those kind of things. But I think, it, I, I think the challenge here is that you know, it's who's responsible? Who is responsible yeah. for monitoring that, for making sure that you know, the context and the, the content are aligned and yeah. that they are appropriate for each other. Is it, is it the platform's fault to, or, or requirement to put a filter, make sure that doesn't happen? Mm -hmm. Is it the media agency's responsibility to provide governance over that kind of placement, mm -hmm. to be slightly more uh, craftsmanship about media buying yeah. like, as they were in the past? Or is it the responsibility of the marketeer to take control of where their brands are being placed? Yeah, and I think you know the there's been a, a huge amount of discussion and debate. I mean, we'll provide some of the links to what we thought are the better commentaries really yeah. around this stuff. We're in the middle of the story, and so uh, you know, in the sense that it's still got a long way to play out. Uh, so, and it's becoming increasingly divisive because it's being, becoming quite accusatory. So there's a lot at stake here to resolve. Um, but in answer to the question, there's responsibility along the chain Absolutely. if that's the intention. And what we mean by that is it ladders all the way back to the marketer. Yeah. So, and it's ultimately the responsibility of the marketer, of course, because it's their money. And the reason that there's a big if across the, the supply chain is that if you are investing your media budget with some care and attention and that you want your agencies your, or whoever's buying your media to care about the placement of your brand, mm. then you need to tell them that, that it's important. That's right. It sounds really silly, but 
That's not written into contracts. Yeah. That's not explained to agencies. And agencies and anyone else, any other business, will tend to do what you ask them to do. So as a marketer, you've got to tell your agencies that actually you do care about the placement. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's the distinction, I think. It is the, a clear distinction between uh, a, a brands that see media as an investment versus brands that perhaps see media as a cost. Yeah. Because this, this fundamentally, is a symptom of a race to the bottom on pricing. Yeah. Okay. So um, if your core KPI is, you know, cost per thousands, right? Then, and all you care about is the lowest possible common denominator in price. Yeah. Then, frankly, you run the risk of appearing in places where the inventory is dreadful. Yeah. Because it's the cheapest inventory there. Exactly. And that's what we've seen. We've seen the industry generally, media buying industry, shift towards buying low cost commodity media. And big agencies, well agencies have become very big in order to deliver that requirement, to, build, to leverage their scale, mm. to buy cheaper and cheaper media. Okay. Now the give up as a marketer is that you then have to accept some risk on quality. Absolutely. That's the trade off. There's no, there's no balance to that. Now it is, I think, there's an obligation of agencies to, the, to their clients to say, if we go down that road, this is the risk, mm -hmm. okay? And if, the, if your agency is not, has not articulated to you the risk of chasing a race to the bottom, of buying purely on audience, cheaper and cheaper and cheaper placement, yeah. if they haven't said to you, listen, there's a risk that, I mean, we can't necessarily control quality to the same extent in order to deliver this cheap prices, then that's a failing of the agency community. Uh, and they should be held responsible if you're a marketer and your agency has not made that really clear. If you're a marketer, you understand the risks and you still chase price, then it's your responsibility. Right. Absolutely, and there are some very valid reasons for uh, you know, advertisers just wanting to buy volume at the lowest possible price, and there's, no, there's nothing wrong with that. But being clear as a marketeer what role you see media playing in your business growth yeah. and therefore the clear instruction to the agencies as to what you want them to do and the guardrails with which they should be providing that governance yeah. is really, really important. Yeah, exactly. And it's something that, I mean, we talk, you've heard us talk about a lot, not that anybody's watching it, of course, because nobody's on YouTube anymore, um, but you'll have heard us talk about this a lot before, is the difference. You know, there are two types of advertiser, really, in the world. Those that view media as a cost and want to manage that downwards, and those that see media as an investment in driving yeah. a business outcome. Okay, You are one or the other. And the, 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 the issues and the problems that we're seeing with you know, brand safety and you know, um, issues with ad placement are absolutely a symptom of the type of advertiser who sees media as a cost. And if you see media as a cost, your primary function within a media management is to reduce cost, and therefore, all you care about is price and discount and auditing. Yeah. You will only see your media agency as a, as a supplier. And you will regard vendors like YouTube and anybody else as suppliers of a commodity which has a price that you want to push down and down and down. Your give up is quality. Yeah. Uh, on the flip side, if you're an advertiser that sees media as an investment to drive a business outcome, that means that you have to take a slightly more long-term view, probably. You will see your agencies and any other supplier as a, actually a more strategic partner to your business. You don't see media as a, as a commodity, but you see it as a lever for growth and therefore an investment and therefore it has a value and you want to maximize that value. You start to care about mm -hmm. quality. Uh, that's the really, really clear distinction. You have to, as a marketer, go and ask yourself as a business, mm -hmm. Which one are you, and are you suffering from these, from these, uh, the, the lack of care and attention that yeah. might come from that side? Yeah. And there's there's lots of talk about, you know, the need for brand safety, like it's something that you should add on, like another layer, like it's an afterthought. Um, we think what's missing is not it's brand safety, but it's brand care. Yeah. These are systems not designed to care about brands. Is it, but I, yeah, and I think from an agency perspective, I think. And, and to kind of just paraphrase uh, 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 Mark Pritchard, mm. he talked about the, the, the difference in crap and craft, right? I mean, yeah. I think in a lot of cases, you know, we've lost the craftsmanship yep. of media buying. You know, the, the connection of content with 
context at the right kind of price. Yeah. And when you lose that, then this, this is where things happen. This yeah. is where inappropriate placements of advertising can happen and it yeah. causes all sorts of problems. Now, you know, buyers have always been responsible for the placement of those ads and it was easier outside of the sort of the, the, you know, the, the, the digital world. But it just becomes harder. That doesn't mean that the agencies don't have a responsibility to care for the brands that they're yeah. working for and put in place checks and balances to make sure that these things, yeah. as far as they are, can control, don't happen. Yeah. So let's just think about what some of those things are. So if you are a marketer and you're thinking, well, actually, yeah, you know what, we regard media somewhat as a cost. We do suffer from lack of quality. We've been chasing audiences. We've been trying to drive costs down and down and down. How do you readdress that? You have to ladder all the way back up to the founding principles of your relationship with your agencies and therefore the supply chain. So number one, the KPIs for media internally. So does your business have clear KPIs, i.e. outcomes, for media that will mean that that's an investment in something driving an outcome. Uh, because if your KPI is get a great audit and get a better discount, then you're on the path to the race to the bottom yeah. and you will end up losing quality and losing craft. Um, so you have to think really what your KPIs are. Uh, have a very clear scope of work. Mm -hmm. So if we said right at the beginning, you know, sounds silly, but actually tell your media buying agency that context is important. Yeah. Tell them that quality is important and measure that stuff mm -hmm. and perhaps even make them accountable. So yeah. pay them on quality measures as well. Right. And that will ladder all the way through to the vendors that yeah. you end up buying from. Uh, evaluate agency performance, not just on their ability to buy cheap media. Yeah. Okay? And if you can do that, it will change this whole ecosystem away from buying cheap at scale. Uh, so incentivize and reward agencies who care about your brand and care. And the remuneration model that you approach is absolutely critical. Make sure that it's fair, it's equitable, yeah. and that it encourages the right behaviours. Exactly. And then finally, get a contract in place which brings all these things together. Right? That, the contract itself is going to determine the, uh, the quality with, of, the, of your agency relationship and also then the quality that you demand of the supply chain going Absolutely. forward. So, you know, if you don't, there's no point agreeing these things in principle or they be like you know, nice to haves or wishes or desires. If you're a media director or CMO, you have responsibility, you've got to bake this into a contract so that it then becomes enforceable. Yeah. And then you can be able to stand up now and say, hey, you know, agency, We've made it very clear we want quality. We've made it very clear that we won't accept kind of crappy ad placement. We pay you to do that job. If you're not going to do the job, then you are simply in the way of our relationship bet between us and Google. Yeah. Because Google, you know, whilst they're getting a lot of heat and a lot of blame at the moment, uh, you know, will they've made a commitment. They will now invest in making these things improvements. They've kind of changed the, yeah. the default settings, if you like, of quality. They've made, they'll make increasingly more uh, tools available to advertisers, agencies have got to justify the, the space that they're going to yeah. take up in between uh, an advertiser and you know, these major, major platforms. Yeah. If you're not adding value... This is it. And the good away. ones will see that. And the good yeah. ones will step into that challenge and will illustrate and prove to their clients that they can add value throughout the process. Indeed. So next up, let's talk about pitching yeah. and the pitch market. And the reason that this is relevant is because if there is ever a time to uh, align internally on those four or five critical components yeah, and reset. that you mentioned and reset those, yeah. it's at the time of a pitch, yeah. right? When you're engaging in a new agency relationship or uh, realigning with your old incumbent agency. Yeah. Uh, and there's a lot going on at the moment. So, um, you know, the, the ability for clients now to really think carefully about how they want their agencies to manage their media, yeah. critical. The scope of work, yeah. the contracts that are being brought into the marketplace with more modern remuneration structures are all going to help modern, more future-facing relationships with their agencies. Yeah. And hopefully that will, that, will, um, that will reduce the amount of issues that we're currently seeing in the, in the market. I think so. And, and the, uh, the pitch is the time to do it. You know, halfway through, or halfway through, but I mean, you know, on normal day-to-day -day business, it's really hard to suddenly adjust all your KPIs for media because you've got a, a big supply chain kind of dependent on those KPIs. You know? And as we've said, some of those are uh, you know, racing down to the bottom. Yeah. You've got 
huge resources just driving in the wrong direction. So to change KPIs, to change agency scope, to change the contract, change the payment model on a day, on any day is really, really yeah. difficult. Um, so if you are approaching a media pitch uh, or a renegotiation even, this is the time to do it. Please take the time to think about the KPIs because you don't have a chance to kind of to revisit this. Um, you know, we t as we talked earlier in this ran very ranty, salty episode, uh, is there are two types of client, those that see media as a cost and on a race to the bottom, and those that see media investment on a race to the top. There are two types of pitches, yeah. you know, in our experience. There are clients who see a pitch as an opportunity uh, to reduce cost. And, you know, there are, you know, in the market right now, some big scale pitches which are really going to be driven uh, by a race to the bottom on cost. You can kind of see it in brutal terms. And it's e auctions. And, and e-auctions. And it's a shame. Um, because those, you know, and, and those will be, create their own kind of symptoms and outcomes of probably poor quality. On the flip side, you've got advertisers who see media as an investment in growth. Right writing really interesting, progressive briefs now, wanting to see their agencies as a strategic partner, setting KPIs that link media to a business outcome, all the kind of good positive stuff. Um, so you know, there's still two types of advertiser and two types of pitches. And do you know what? Those, the, the, the second uh, type of advertiser yeah. that you described there, are the ones that are going to get the greatest attention from the agencies. Right? Yeah. I mean, just. Just this week, I think there was about two billion dollars worth of reviews that were announced. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, what we do know is that the agencies are going to be uh, stretched resource-wise. Yeah. Their value pots are going to be under pressure, yeah. uh, and they will have to be selective on the reviews that they go all in on. Yeah. And from the conversations we've had with senior agency leaders, the ones that are most appealing to them because they need to inspire their teams to. Uh, invest enormous amounts of time and effort on these pitches mm. are the ones that have a strategic ambition at the beginning. Yeah. That are more than just uh, an exercise in, in you know, leaping over the edge of a cliff and, and, yeah. a, and a race to the bottom. Yeah. And, and agencies, I think, want to care about media. Yeah. Right? You know, th this is, I think there's a frustration on the agency side, you know, going somewhat back to the Google story again, is that because it's not in their scope to really care, and because it's not in their scope to craft media buying in the way that you've described, um, and because advertisers are seeing them as a have seen them as a commodity service supplier, um, you know it's hard for them to invest. So when an advertiser comes along and says, "You know what? I'm really I've got really good clear KPIs, mm. and that we do want you to care about context and quality, yeah. and we do want to reward you for you know the effect that your work has on our business, and we do want you to be a partner, uh, not just a layer." Agencies really value that, yeah. and and those briefs that are out there, um, which you know, lucky enough, you know, they tend to find them their way to us because we're somewhat self-selecting. But uh, you know, they they have a real impact, and they're exciting the agencies, yeah. which is really good to see. Um, speaking of uh, speaking of uh, brands that have reviewed their agencies that have come slightly unstuck, uh, yeah. Sainsbury's. Oh dear. That's so I mean, you know, we don't have a wall of shame, but we, I mean, if we did. Uh, we'd be sticking Sainsbury's on there. Um, you might have seen, we'll link to a story, Sainsbury's, uh, big UK, massive UK advertiser, um, you know, big retailer here, uh, moved their business away from PhD. a long-standing 20-year relationship with PhD. Yeah. It was one of the longest of relationships ago. in any kind of client agency portfolio, right? Yeah. I mean, over two decades worth of, yeah. of time together. And then without a pitch, in February, it was moved to, to WPP, yeah, uh, WPP right. agency. Um, this upset Omnicom management so badly that they've complained to the board of Sainsbury's and actually the re decision has been reversed. And so now Sainsbury's appear to be now running a competitive pitch of some sort. Right, yeah, we don't uh, know, but what a An agency that they effectively fired a very short notice quite brutally, an agency that thought they'd won the business and now taken it back yeah. off them. How on earth you run a competitive process now? And even then, with two highly demotivated yeah. <laughs> agencies. And even then, whatever decision ultimately Sainsbury's have to make, uh, 
neither party, neither Victoria's party will be enjoying that honeymoon period. No, what a shambles. What an absolute um, shambles. And before we go, well, you should check out, we'll link to a, uh, a, a really interesting story that's been in the trade press here. It's called The Fear and Loathing as a regard to media pitches, uh, which gathered a lot of commentary from across the industry on uh, you know, the good, the bad and the ugly of pitches. It's well worth the read. Um, please check it out. That's all there is to say for this week. Uh, bye for now. Have a good weekend.